Hey, this is Dr. Tom Rogers, the Common Sense MD, as I've labeled myself recently, um, because I think common sense is important in practicing medicine. Um, you know, there's an art of medicine as well as a science of medicine. And how we learn to listen to our patients and decipher complex things into less complicated, more simple terms that people understand and more likely to do is what we try to do at Performance Medicine. Um, make the complex easy. That's why I study all the time and I try to take experience um, into play. And um, But anyway, um, we're going to talk this week about something very interesting and that's the importance of iron levels. You know, for years I've run these comprehensive lab tests. Um, the one I do now is called the Cleveland Heart Panel. That um, is one of the most important things I do because it gives me so much information about your metabolism, your um, lipid profile from the size of your particles to... Um, the breakdown of your fatty acids to your vitamin levels to all your hormones, thyroid, adrenals, insulin resistance, um, liver, kidney. I mean, I get a pretty good idea about your um, how healthy you are in looking at these, these Cleveland heart panels every day. And um, one that's really important that a lot of people don't look at is something I've been studying a lot lately. Um, and that's the importance of that ferritin level on there that I measure. Um, you know, a lot of labs have a pretty wide range of values, and you really don't want normal. You really want optimal. In this case, with iron levels, which ferritin, which is a protein that regulates how much iron is stored and when it's released in your body, is the best test for this, your ferritin level. Um, so if I'm not your doctor, if you have another doctor, make sure they check your ferritin level because it's a very important thing, uh, to know. Um, and you know, this can be too low, which we usually worry about, or actually too high, which you should almost worry about more. And that's not something, uh, that's dealt with a lot unless you have a hereditary thing called hemochromatosis that um, requires you to donate blood uh, frequently. But the thing about iron is we all know that low iron means anemia. But the thing is, more is not better in this case. In fact, high iron levels are, are a very serious threat to your health. Um, and it can be a, like a slow threat because you're probably not going to know it um, unless you check for it. Um, an increased iron level can permanently damage organs, tissues, and joints. Um, it can definitely increase your risk of cancer, heart disease, premature death, and even dementia. Um, and again, the best test is the ferritin, the serum ferritin level, um, which is a protein that stores iron and releases it when your body actually needs it. It's the best test for iron overload. Um, women excrete iron monthly through their menstrual cycles. Men don't. Uh, that may be one reason why women live longer than men. They don't accumulate excess iron uh, like men do. Um, they get anemic more often because of that, but anemia is easily treated in this condition with just a vitamin with iron. Um, but there's a point where you don't want iron in your vitamins, and most men should not have iron in their vitamins. Um, iron is needed for growth, and that's why you need it as kids. It's actually, a, a, in a way, it's a growth uh, promoter. Um, obese people have more iron than non-obese people, and it may be a factor in obesity. As a matter of fact, um, an increased ferritin level can predict future weight gain. So you see it more in obese people. Um, think of it as growth. Obese people are, have grown more. You know, <laughs> growth is good if you're a kid, but 
is you're an adult, you don't want more growth. Um, more growth leads to cancer as well as obesity. Um, so we've known that increased ferritin levels also will lead to increased rates of diabetes, uh, coronary artery disease, really because increased iron increases your oxidized LDL. That's that bad cholesterol that if, if it's oxidized can stick to your arteries and cause inflammation, thereby heart attacks. Um, as a matter of fact, people who regularly donate blood have about 50% less heart attacks. So that's interesting. Um, it also causes neurogenitive diseases like Alzheimer's and um, cancer. You know, we, we've linked red meat to increased rates of colon cancer, and it's probably because of excess iron. We know that it can cause osteoporosis, um, hemochromatosis, that genetically determined increase uh, ferritin level, um, damages your liver, can cause cirrhosis, uh, also your pancreas and your heart. Um, you know, if you, if you have iron overload through the years, you can have some symptoms from this. Uh, joint pain is a, probably the most common one. Um, your skin can turn bronze, um, and actually that's from diabetes. Uh, you can have arrhythmias, palpitations from excess iron. Um, you can be tired because of too much iron, just like you can with too little iron. This can cause abdominal pain. Um, you know, it, when we replace hormones with testosterone, testosterone can increase your uh, red blood cell count. So you have to monitor that. That's why on a lot of guys, maybe 10, 5 to 10% of the ones I treat with uh, testosterone, they have to donate occasionally um, to lower those levels. Um, so treatment uh, or other things you can do, don't cook in iron pots if your ferritin levels are high. Uh, don't eat cereal or white bread which are fortified with iron. You shouldn't eat them anyway. Um, de look at your vitamins and make sure they don't have iron in them. Um, decrease your red meats and decrease your organ meats. Um, you know, I'm a firm believer in vitamin C, uh, but if you have too much iron in, in your blood, uh, then you need to de decrease the vitamin C as vitamin C increases iron absorption. Very important if you have to supplement with iron that you take vitamin C an hour before. But if you have too much of it, you don't want to overdo the vitamin C. Um, ways you can decrease your iron levels, of course, by donating blood. Um, curcumin, uh, which is turmeric, helps uh, bind the iron and get rid of it. That's a, that's a great reason to take curcumin. Um, drinking black tea. Um, if you have increased iron loads, you may even take some calcium, which binds the iron. Uh, red wine and coffee will help if your iron levels are too high. Fasting helps that. Exercise helps it. You sweat some of your iron out, although you have to do a lot of it. And very importantly, taking a baby aspirin every day, um, which we know uh, protects your heart. We always thought it was because it thins your blood somewhat, which it does, uh, but also um, may cause low-level bleeding in your intestines um, that is, enables you to lower those levels. Um, this is probably a reason why uh, it decreases cancer rates of the colon. Um, so Think about taking an aspirin every day. Um, again, you don't want it to, to take it if it causes a peptic ulcer, but um, that may be one mechanism by which it decreases um, heart disease as well as thins your blood. So think about that. Um, I usually recommend most people take um, a baby aspirin at age 40 for men, women at 50 to prevent heart disease. I know I've been doing it for years and years. And maybe this is one reason my ferritin level stays pretty normal. Um, levels, you know, normal is really under 300 for men and under 200 for women. 
Uh, but that probably is not ideal. Um, you know, I think ideal is more like 50 to 100. Um, uh, there's a lot of other reasons why you don't want too low a ferritin level. If your ferritin level is below 50, then your thyroid may not work as well. Um, so look at your levels and you're looking for ideal. You don't want too high a ferritin level, just like you don't want too low a ferritin level. So get your levels checked, ferritin, run the Cleveland Heart Panel with us. Um, that certainly will check it. We'll talk about all your levels when you come in to discuss this and what supplements you need and how to stay healthy, prevent heart disease and cancer and fatigue. Uh, so a lot of things to ponder about your iron levels. I bet you didn't know a lot of that stuff. Um, anyway, uh, performance medicine, uh, the common sense MD, uh, come see us. If you have a question, you can uh, write us or email us at performancemedicine.net. Um, the importance of iron levels. I'll see you next week.